In 1986, the East German government had a problem. The number four reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant had exploded. Even more disastrous, the West knew about it and was reporting on it, which meant that outside of a very small area, East German citizens were seeing Western reports. The atom had always held a very special place in the Soviet bloc, yet by the 1980s, fear of it had taken hold. The Soviet bloc was in a precarious state in 1986, and it couldn't take the hit to its economy that fear of nuclear power would entail. So the East German government did what they thought would save their state. They suppressed news about the disaster and deliberately spread false information to their citizens about it. The Soviet bloc always pushed arms control hard while funding anti-nuke campaigns throughout the world. East Germany was no exception. Part of East German education was showcasing the belligerent West. This 1961 East German textbook showcased launch pads for nuclear missiles which threatened peace and extricated the West German government as warmongers who are afraid of the will of the people. Yet in the Soviet bloc, the atom was also an agent of peace, specifically in the use of atomic energy. As seen in these propaganda posters, a hard distinction was made between nuclear energy and nuclear arms. Arms. Concurrently in the West, there were two movements that weren't initially linked, the anti-nuclear weapons movement and the anti-nuclear power movement. But by the 1980s, the environmental movement had gained power, and inspired by flashpoints such as Three Mile Island, became grouped in with the nuclear freeze, the anti-arms movement. The West German anti-nuke movement had been continually growing throughout the 1970s, and by the 1980s were front page news around the world. Further, the West German Green Party explicitly linked anti-nuclear power politics with anti-NATO politics. And as the Soviet bloc was heavily intertwined with the arms control movement, see here this memorandum of conversation between the, at the time, Deputy Chairman of the KGB, Vladimir Khrushchev, and the Stasi head of foreign intelligence, Marcus Wolf, where they discuss problems of the peace movement and that their hands should not be visible during such actions. They are taken by surprise when the arms control movements within the Soviet bloc take on the anti-nuclear energy rhetoric. And then 26 April 1986 happened. Infamously, the Soviet Union initially attempted to deny that the Chernobyl disaster happened. But once word broke out, they had a secondary disaster on their hands. If people questioned the safety of nuclear power, they could begin to question the legitimacy of the state. The nuclear industry, as a Spiegel article would write in 2006, was a symbol of progress. Questioning it was not something you did. Initial news reports by East German state organs attempted to downplay the disaster. The May 1st issue of the Berliner Zeitung dropped news about Chernobyl under an article about Reagan's Star Wars, and specifically said, no levels of radioactivity that could pose a health risk were measured. Two days later, the paper published tables of radioactive levels measured in the air to say they had stabilized at a low level and that the health of the population was never endangered. And this followed from reports prepared for the government immediately after the accident. The State Office for Nuclear Safety and Radiation Protection initially reported that the population's radiation exposure is negligible. But as the second most influential band of the modern age would say, Radioactivity is in the air for you and me. Radio and television signals from the West reached into the East, and people began repeating the stories that they had heard. They believed the government was lying to them, and the government knew they were. The tables printed in the East German newspapers were only a portion of what the state knew, and it was done to help assuage a population that was in fear, a population being monitored by the Ministry for State Security, the Stasi. Reports sent in by informants indicate that non-party workers were scared about contamination. This 9 May 1986 report stated, There are phenomena that citizens refuse to eat salad and fresh milk, and that a teacher had stated, It is out of the question for me to eat vegetables grown outdoors. On West German television, I heard that radiation damage is still effective for 30 years. Further, they were upset that the East German government wasn't responding how they had heard Western governments were. One should not take people for fools, because if very high radioactive levels have already been measured in the West, they are even higher here. At the same time, party members were downplaying this slow response, and blaming Western media for reporting without all the facts. The West exploits the whole story in its favor and deliberately causes panic among the population. We saw a version of this with the Berliner Zeitung, as many mentioned previously. The basic line being pushed is not to trust the West reports and to trust that this state had the population's best interests in hand. But in that report I just went over is a curious line. Children's milk wasn't being picked up. And the reason gave was that obviously the influence of West German television is very strong in this area, and citizens believe the opponent's arguments. As covered by Der Spiegel, East Germans were hesitant to buy food off of shelves due to fears of contamination. What that informant didn't know, however, was what the East German government already knew by the 3rd of May, that in at least three areas, the limit values for small children were exceeded. And despite the knowledge that radioactive levels were continually rising, it was decided that the public did not need to be informed about this. 
As stated, although the radioactive contamination of milk is still increasing, from a technical point of view, the current radiation situation does not necessarily mean that measures have to be implemented in public. Instead, there was a message that was being pushed out. Everything is fine. The West is exaggerating concerns. But even those in the government doubted this approach. Gunter Schabowski would later say that adding your own commentary was not allowed. There could be only one truth. But there wasn't. The public, influenced by Western reports that contradicted the official line out of the East German government, continued to grow in opposition to nuclear power. And internal arms control movements in East Germany continued to adopt the rhetoric of the green movements in the West. A 1989 KGB report to the Stasi highlights this. Blame is placed on traditional U.S. mouthpieces as being centers of this blame and mistrust. To the public, it wasn't the West that was contaminating the population. It was the state that had lied to them. 